Good morning, everyone. I want to welcome you all to our live stream today. I'm glad you are here taking time to be refreshed by the life giving stream of God's word on this beautiful Sunday morning, uh, the Memorial Weekend. Uh, I know maybe many of you are, are, are wanting to just get out of your uh, homes and enjoy the sun and uh, uh, those are all good. Um, and uh, we are, we've just come through a long, uh, what should I say? Shelter in place for 10 weeks. You know, we have been kind of enduring this and uh, and we are wondering uh, when are we going to get back to our uh, live, uh, live worship with our brothers and sisters, uh, sing songs of praise. And uh, you know what? I am also longing to get back to that time where we can all be together in worshiping the Lord. But under the given circumstances, I believe we got to uh, uh, exercise a little bit more patience and uh, uh, restraint because of uh, we are not fully out of the woods yet. Uh, the COVID, uh, the virus is very much uh, present and um, uh, we are hearing all kinds of reports. Uh, but uh, some people want to get back to church and some churches have opened up. But uh, at Hope Church, we have taken all these uh, calculations into considerations. Uh, the elders and the uh, trustees and myself, we've been praying and uh, seeking the Lord's direction. When would be uh, maybe a safe way to reopen our in-person worship services? So we put up a date, uh, a tentative date, that would be June uh, 14th, is a Sunday. Well, we're just giving ourselves uh, enough time to prepare and also to grieve uh, with those people uh, who have lo uh, whose lives have been lo uh, who've lost their loved ones. How could we ever properly grieve over close to 100,000 lives that have been lost in our country alone, not to mention the rest of the world? How could we properly grieve? So let's not be so eager to get back. I understand the desire to get back and worship. But for now, I just want to encourage you to uh, uh, tune to the Lord. Uh, uh, wherever you are, that's the church. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Uh, let the Spirit of God come and minister to you today. Uh, if you're in, uh, in your bedroom or wherever, or maybe taking a walk, let the Lord touch you. Today I am uh, very excited to, to uh, uh, share this good news. My second daughter, our second daughter, Jamima, uh, she is graduating uh, from Colby College uh, with a Bachelor's uh, of Arts uh, degree with double majoring in it. Uh, we are so excited, we are proud of her. Uh, we want to congratulate her. Maybe, at the, maybe take a moment, and if you want to congratulate, congratulate Jamima, uh, that would be great. Uh, she, uh, under these circumstances, it's not so nice for her to go through this uh, celebration uh, at home. Uh, but you know, we all need to do what we need to do. But we just want to congratulate Jamima. Thank you, Jamima. You've done it. Uh, you brought joy to our hearts and we are praying for you and we are uh, rooting for you. May the Lord's uh, guidance and uh, uh, strength be upon you as we venture into the next phase of, uh, uh, of your, uh, the journey that is ahead of you. Um, and uh, having said that, I'm also uh, saddened in my heart uh, to hear about... Uh, uh, the news of uh, uh, Diane Sundstrom, her cancer is been uh, hasn't has is increasing, is spreading uh, to the to the uh, in her body. You know, ha she hasn't been fully healed of that. We've been praying for her, and we are praying for mercy to get healed as well, and praying for other people who are sick among us. Um, and I'm also saddened to uh, uh, to share that the uh, uh, one of our in the Christian world, uh, my good mentor uh, through his word and uh, 
uh, for many of us, um, a strong, positive Christian voice of faith and reasoning, uh, who was considered as uh, the modern-day Apostle Paul, Ravi Zacharias. Many of you heard his name, and uh, I re often referred to uh, of his stories in, our, in my sermons, and uh, uh, he's gone to be with the Lord last week. Uh, when I heard that news, I was deeply saddened to, uh, as if I've lost my brother, one from, he's from India too, uh, uh, but brother in the Lord, but uh, even more so, um, a reference point, uh, you know, like Billy Graham and uh, Ravi Zacharias or Eugene Peterson or uh, Chuck Colson or uh, David Wilkerson's, these voices have been uh, the reference points for me uh, uh, growing up in my faith in the Lord. And one of such voices is gone from us. But I know, you know what? He's touched many lives and he's very much alive in the presence of the Lord. I just want us to thank God for his life and pray for his family as well. Um, and uh, this is a memorial weekend uh, today, uh, weekend, so we're going to pray for uh, all those who have given uh, uh, their lives uh, in protecting our freedoms, and we'll be praying for them as well, uh, their families. Um, but would you turn with me, to, if you have your Bibles, to the last book of the Bible, Revelation, uh, first chapter, verses 9 to, uh, um, I would say, 18. Uh, these are wonderful words of uh, encouragement for us. What that would look like when we all get to heaven. Uh, what would that be like? Uh, just a glimpse uh, of um, uh, heavenly scene here. Um, John, the evangelist, had. So let me read that for us, book of Revelation, and then we will pray and we'll go with the rest of the service. Revelation 1, uh, 9, verse 9 onwards. Let me give you a moment to turn to that. I, John, am your brother and your partner in suffering and in God's kingdom and in the patience endurance to which Jesus calls us. I was exiled to the island of Patmos for preaching the word of God and for my testimony about Jesus. Uh, it was the Lord's day and I was worshiping in the spirit. It is the Lord's day today. You're worshiping the Lord from wherever you are. You couldn't be in the church, but you're still worshiping the Lord in the spirit. Suddenly I heard Behind me a loud voice like a trumpet blast. It said, write in a book everything you see and send it to the seven churches in the cities of Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. When I turned to see who was speaking to me, I saw seven gold lampstands. And standing in the middle of the lampstands was someone like the Son of Man. He was wearing a long robe with a gold sash across his chest. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were like flames of fire. His feet were like polished bronze refined in a furnace. And his voice thundered like mighty ocean waves. He held seven stars in his right hand and a sharp two-edged sword come, came from his mouth and his face was like the sun in all its brilliance. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as if I were dead. But he laid his right hand on me and said, Don't be afraid. I'm the first and the last. I'm the living one. I died, but look, I'm alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and the grave. Do you say amen for that? Oh, dear friend, today you will have the vision of the ascended, enthroned Christ, our Lord and Savior, Oh, may you fall at his feet 
as though you were dead and worship him. So join with me as we pray and open up our hearts. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We worship you. Oh God, we love you, Lord Jesus. Oh, you are the Alpha and the Omega, Lord. We praise you, God, and we worship you today. Lord, we, we thank you, Lord, for all the answered prayers, God. Thank you for Jemima, Lord, how you've helped her to, uh, until today. Uh, on her graduation day, we, we pray for her, Lord God, that you would continue to lead her and guide her. Uh, may, see, may she have her, your peace. Uh, 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 truly, her name suggests Jemima Shalom, Lord. She will have your peace today, Lord God. Oh, Father, we thank you. We praise you, Lord. God, we remember to pray for our dear sister, Diane. God, we are asking you for a miracle. Lord God, by your stripes, she's healed. She's the, she's the temple of the Holy Spirit that lives in her. Lord God, today, would you visit her, Lord God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord. We speak to that cancer to be gone in the name of Jesus. Lord, you have the power to heal and you are able to heal. You can and Lord, we believe you will. We thank you and we praise you. We pray the same prayer for our sister Mercy as well. Heal her body too, Lord God. And everyone else who might be sick, Lord, today, and, uh, that uh, are battling uh, COVID symptoms or other uh, flu symptoms, Lord God, we just pray that you would heal them and strengthen them. Those who are discouraged, Lord, those who are lonely, Father, God, you would be very near to them. Lord, we want to offer up a special prayer on this Memorial uh, uh, Day weekend, Father, as we remember those who have made the ultimate sacrifice for the freedom that we enjoy every day. We think of how they have followed in the footsteps of, of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, please hold our servicemen and women in your strong arms. Lord, cover them with your sheltering gra grace and your presence as they stand in the gap for our protection. We pray that you, Lord, watch over those exposed to the horror of war, Lord. Give them such a strong faith that no human respect may ever lead them to deny it, Lord, nor fear ever to practice it, Lord. Send uh, your angels, Lord God, to protect them against the coronavirus. Oh God, we pray that those who are uh, out there serving, bring them home safely, Lord, to be reunited with their families. And Lord, above all, they may be ready to meet you face to face when the time comes. Lord, we also remember the families of our troops. We ask for your unique blessings to fill their homes and we pray for your peace, provision and strength will fill their lives. Oh Lord God, we thank you. We remember our military brothers and sisters Oh, God, that they would feel your love and your support, God. So, Lord, today we pray all these prayers in the ascended and enthroned name of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. And all God's people said, Amen and Amen. God bless you as you tune into our worship today as we look forward to, would you join with me in singing this song uh, audio song, Build Your Kingdom Here.
Amen. Amen. Wasn't that a wonderful uh, uh, reminder, you know, that this God is building his kingdom, he's purging us, and he's putting us on fire. Uh, we miss John and uh, the worship team uh, leading us on uh, life. Uh, well, we'll get back to those days, but uh, uh, thank you, worship team and John, for putting that songs together. So let's uh, look to the Lord for what he has for us today. Dear Father, as we look into your word today, keep us away from every other distraction. Pray for your anointing to be upon us, conviction to come upon us, uh, encouragement and challenge. Lord, whoever is now coming in to listen to it, tune it, Lord, or who will listen to it, Lord, that anointing will carry through. And, uh, and uh, Lord, let your word go forth and accomplish for the, the, for the purpose which is sent, Lord God. We thank you, we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. I'd like to share with us a, a true story uh, shared by Randy Alcorn uh, in his book uh, called Spiritual Warfare, Demons and Righteous Angels. So he notes, My family stayed with the Shell Ernson family in Kenya back in 1989. Shell grew up attending Rift Valley Academy in Kajiba, Kenya. During our visit, she told me, Shell told me a story I've heard since about something that happened there in the 1950s. Shell's family was living there at the time, and he pointed out to us where the events of that night unfolded. That particular night, during Mao Mao Rebellion, the ruthless warriors of the Mao Mao tribe gathered to climb the hill up to the missionary school RVA, that means Rift Valley Academy, to capture and kill the missionary children and teachers and fulfill their vows by eating uh, uh, the brains of people who they considered their oppressors. Horrible. Uh, a word got out about this plan, but it was too late to evacuate the school or to get outside protection. Desperate phone calls were made and people around the world were called upon to pray for God's intervention. The night went on with teachers and children huddled at Rift Valley Academy, praying and fully experiencing, expecting to be attacked and likely be killed any moment. But nothing happened. The warriors never made it to the school and no one was harmed. No one knew the rest of the story until some time later when a Mao Mao warrior was in jail and on trial. At his trial, the leader of Mao Mao's who led that attack was asked, on this particular night, did you intend to kill the inhabitants of the missionary school? Yes, he replied. Then why didn't you? His answer, we were on our way to attack and kill them, but as we claim, came closer, suddenly between the school and us, there were many men dressed in white, holding flaming swords. He said he and his warriors were all terrified and fled down the hill, never to return. You now sure, sometimes... God chooses not to answer our desperate prayers precisely as we wish. But and yes, sometimes God chooses, uh, uh, sometimes God's children are hurt and even killed. But how many times he has answered when we haven't realized he's moved heaven and earth and maybe a company of righteous angels to do it. Had the human warriors not told what they saw, no one would have known what happened at night. How many amazing stories will we not hear until we are with Jesus? Well, I do not doubt that answer. There's so many, majority of those stories are not told of how God intervened. Uh, when he went by sending his angels. Now we've been on a journey uh, in the book of Hebrews to discover better things uh, in life uh, on this side of the uh, heavens 
and even when we get into heaven so we are on that process of discovering these better things last week we learned how jesus the the son radiates the glory of god and in him we have everything we need this morning we will continue to focus on the sun again but this time by looking at the contrast between Jesus the son of god and the angels and we will try to answer some questions maybe you are having on your heart are angels real what is their role in the life of a believer can we worship angels who is greater are the angels or jesus or jesus is greater than angels we will look at all this in our studies we found out after establishing certain facts about how god communicates to the world the author highlighted that the sun radiates the glory of god in hebrews uh, first chapter verse 3 to 4 how uh, he captured the the completed work of jesus that was the work of purification of sin and then he talks about the 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 elevated position or, or the superior or exalted position of jesus that was at the right hand of the father hebrews 1 to uh, as i said first chapter three to four let me read that for us when he had cleansed us from our sins he sat down in the place of honor at the right hand of the majestic god in heaven this shows that the sun is far greater than the angels just as the name god gave him is greater than their names you know, there are many names of angels we find uh, in the Bible, Seraphim, or uh, Michael, or Gabriel, or, uh, uh, you know, so on, so forth. You know, we can find so many names of angels, but Jesus' name is greater than all these angels. Now, what do we see in these two verses? Jesus completed the work of his salvation. You know, only when we finish all the work, we sit down, right, uh, to relax, uh, at least for the time being. So he finished all the work of the salvation. Now Jesus is in heaven. Where is he? On the right hand of the Father. What is his posture? Seated. Seated. He's seated on the, at the right hand of the Father, the majestic God. And I also see in this passage the uh, angels uh, and the superior position of Jesus over them. Now let me uh, uh, let's say, uh, answer this question. What does it mean that Jesus sat at the right hand of God? What is it all about? The right hand. We'll talk about that. What about, what about the right hand of God? In the ancient uh, um, beliefs, even for, to an extent these days too, the hand uh, was an is symbolic uh, especially in the ancient ancient world that it was believed that from it one either bestowed grace or pronounced punishment either you extended grace or pronounced punishment in literature it personified a king's a king or a deity's character and deeds now to be seated at the right hand of a ruler meant occupying a place of high, high honor in those days. The position itself was considered an, uh, an indicator of the power and authority of the one holding. Now, someone who sat at the king's right hand was, as in the modern English idiom, uh, we call uh, his right hand man. You know, that's, uh, that's how... You know, he or, he or she, you know, right hand man or right hand woman, right? Because that means he or she is carrying out the, uh, the authority and the power. Uh, also, sitting at the right hand was a statement of fellowship and favor between the central figure and the individual so honored. So, so much is there to think about right hand. 
uh, in the Hebrew Bible, the right hand represented God's ultimate strength uh, uh, and provision for his people. You know, remember scriptures like God has delivered them by his right hand, by his hand, mighty hand. We receive his provision for his people. Now, Jesus Christ is depicted in the Bible as sitting at the right hand of God the Father for eternity. Many scriptures are uh, showing that. For example, uh, if you can turn to Psalm 110. Let me give you a, a moment to look at this. Psalm 110, verse 1. Psalm 110, verse 1. The Lord said to my Lord, Sit in the place of honor at my right hand until I humble your enemies, making them a footstool under your feet. The same thing we'll find in Hebrews first chapter, verses 5 to 14, if you read. The apostle Peter testifies in Acts second chapter 30 to 33. God raised Jesus from the dead and we are all witnesses of this now he is exalted in the place of highest honor in heaven where at God's right hand later when Peter and the apostles were brought before the council because of their preaching because of their faith in their savior and this is what they boldly unashamedly proclaimed when they were uh, uh, they, when they were accountable to whom they were accountable to and whom they are not accountable to that is the human authorities they said in uh, Acts 5th chapter we'll read that but Peter and Apostle replied we must obey God rather than any human authority the God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead after you kill him by hanging him on a cross He's not on the cross. On the cross, then God put him in a in the place of honor, where again at His right hand as Prince and Savior. He did this so the people of Israel would repent of their sins and be forgiven. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, who is given by God to those who obey Him. You see that that that's what their their courage, their their uh, uh, their understanding. Now, what gave Peter and the apostles such courage in the midst of persecution and suffering? I believe it was their perception of who Jesus was, who Jesus is, and where he is today. Oh, dear friends, we too must have that perception of Jesus. Unlike uh, the, uh, uh, portrayed by uh, our Catholic friends, Jesus often is put, is put on the cross, hanging uh, pitifully uh, uh, on the cross. We get that sort of a, a defeated when you look at that picture. Uh, uh, he's broken as a broken and a victim of a Roman's execution. Well, that's not what how Jesus is right now. He is the victorious king. He is victoriously risen. He is ascended to heaven. We just went through the week of ascension. This We are in the week of ascension before we come to the day of Pentecost, which is next Sunday. So he is ascended to heaven. He is enthroned in heaven with the Father. And his name is uh, everywhere. Uh, uh, he's highly, that's what we read. He's been given a name that is greater. So when we picture Jesus that way, we can come out of our, oh, poor me. Oh, nobody cares for me. And nobody loves me. Oh, everybody hates me. Oh, the victim mentality, we can come out of that. When we see Jesus seated at the right hand of the Father, we can go through any hardship or difficulty or challenge because the hardships or the difficulties or the suffering, even the coronavirus will not have the last word on our lives. 
but it is Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Do you say amen for that? He has the last word. He controls our lives because he's risen superiorly. He's superior than everything we see. So I believe that is the position that we need to have in our minds. We need to look at the picture, in our picture, let's picturize Jesus as the exalted, have that heavenly perspective. Let's not get bogged down by these earthly concerns because Jesus is, and in the, in, in the Bible it says, we are seated with him in the heavenly places. So that's what our actual, as a believer, your position is, you are seated next to Christ. Well, your feet are still on the earth, but at least your head should be filled with with the things of Jesus. I believe that's what, that's the picture of exalted Jesus gave the early martyrs courage and strength to endure persecution and even die for the sake of their Lord, Master, and King. And the same perspective can help us today in our times of trouble and persecution, doubt, or our suffering, our heartache. So let's have that heavenly perspective. Now here is the testimony of the, the first martyr for his faith. His name was Stephen. Uh, in the Bible, we find that in book of Acts, 7th chapter. I want you to find that. Please turn your Bibles to Acts 7, uh, verses 55 to 59, we will read. It is so important that you get that picture of where Jesus is right now. Acts 7, 55 to 59. Follow with me. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed steadily into heaven and saw the glory of God. And he saw Jesus standing in the place of honor at God's right hand. And he told them, look, look, I see the heavens opened. And the Son of Man standing in the place of honor at God's right hand. Oh, that infuriated them, infuriated them so much. They were so angry, they began to gnash their teeth, it says. So they rushed at him and dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. As they stoned him, Jesus prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Now here is, here is only in one place we see Jesus standing at the right hand. What's that about? All the, all the other scriptures I've looked at, it said that he sat at the right hand. But here, here he was standing. It was as if he was giving a standing ovation for the first martyr that was coming into his presence. And many martyrs that would follow, follow Stephen's path. All those people who have been killed, martyred for their faith. As if Jesus was standing up and clapping. I, I picture that. Come into Father's glory. And that's the only time I see why he was standing there. Oh dear friends. I just want us to get that elevated perspective of Christ. We talked quite a bit about, uh, the, uh, about the right hand of God today because I want us to get that perspective. I want to move a little next, to the next level of my teaching today is Jesus is greater than the angels. Jesus is greater than the angels. Verse 4, it says this shows that the Son is far greater than the angels. Just as the name God gave him, he's, he, he, he's greater than their names. Here the author was making a powerful assertion saying that Jesus, the Son, is far greater than the angels. Now what made Jesus greater than the angels? The, the author's basis for his assertion was twofold. What gave him that elevated position? It was twofold. One is that the works of Jesus, 
what he completed, and the testimony of God himself regarding his son that is recorded in ancient scriptures. That's what the author was very familiar with the Old Testament uh, uh, passages. If you read through, you'll find out even in first, uh, Hebrews first chapter, how many times he quoted from the Old Testament. And that's what the uh, what Christ, the Christ Christ's enduring work of saving people still keeps him in that elevated position. Now, I want us to focus a little bit about angels. What do we know about angels? When I talk about angels, I'm not talking to the angels cafe in Sharon. Uh, angels that we often encounter, talk about. Now, why did the author make that distinction between Jesus and angels? Well, at that time of this writing, uh, the Jews held uh, angels in very high regard. Uh, as the most elevated beings next to God. There was a sect of Judaism that had established a community at, at Qumran. They taught that the angels or the they thought they thought Archangel Michael Michael's authority uh, uh, superpassed that of the Messiah. So the writer of Hebrew disclaims any such notion by asserting that Jesus is indeed greater than the angels, including the archangel Michael. So the word angels appear in this chapter alone. If you read uh, first, first Hebrews, uh, first chapter, first chapter in Hebrews, about six times I've noted here uh, in my study, that gives some significance to this passage. Both the Hebrew and Greek words that are translated into Eng English as angel also mean messenger. The angels, therefore, are messengers from God. Uh, bringing forth his message to people. There are several encounters uh, that people had with angels in the Bible. Uh, I want to just read out a few uh, from the Old Testament. Uh, for example, uh, Genesis 3, God placed two cherubims with flaming swords guard the gates of Eden after Adam and Eve were banished. Genesis 18, three angels Tell Abraham and Sarah that they will have a child. Genesis 19. God sends two angels to save Lot's family from the destruction at Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, Hagar and Ishmael. Remember that story when Ishmael was a boy and he was crying out for water? Who saved Hagar? It was an angel of the Lord. And Abraham was offering his only son, Isaac. Remember that story? And who stopped Abraham from killing Isaac? That was an angel of the Lord. And the great mighty Samson. Do you remember that mighty Samson? Before he was born, an angel of the Lord comes to his mother saying that you're going to have a special child. Well, I just gave you a few of these uh, stories, just a, so a simple list. Well, we all are familiar with other angelic visitations, don't we? Surrounded uh, the narrative of uh, Jesus' birth, what happened, who brought these messages from heaven to Zechariah, or to Mary, or to Joseph or to the shepherds, or to the wise men who brought these messages. Or we know who ministered to Jesus when he was fasting in the wilderness. Remember that 40 days, who ministered to him after his fast? Or who strengthened Jesus during his agony in the garden of Gethsemane? Or who rolled the stone away, remember, at the, when he rose from the dead? Who did that? Or who told the disciples who were looking into heaven, remember when Jesus was being ascended into heaven? Who came to the disciple and said, buddies, don't keep staring up there. Get back to your work. 
of saving the lost. Who did that? Or at the end of our time, who will complete the harvesting of souls? Well, you know the answers to all that. They were all angels. Angels who obeyed God's instructions and served his people. Now, when you go home, I want to encourage you, go through uh, uh, the section that's found in uh, Hebrews 1st chapter, verse 5 to 15, and you will see how the author cleverly using Jewish uh, uh, understanding of, an of angels from the Old Testament and proves to the Jews that Jesus was and is indeed greater than the angels. Therefore, angels are, he concludes in um, verse, at, uh, verse 14, Hebrews 1, 14. It says, therefore, angels are only servants, spirits sent to care of people who will inherit salvation. Oh, dear friends, uh, uh, we are living in New England. A lot of people believe uh, in angels uh, because of Irish Catholic tradition. Uh, or we put our trust in saints, you know, uh, Angel Gabriel or Angel Michael, or we say, uh, Saint Anthony, Saint Anthony helps me. And, uh, you know, our trust, a lot of people believe and worship even angels and, and saints. But are we to worship angels? Well, we'll find out in a little while. But all I want to say today is that angels are, are real. And it says here in verse 14, they are servants sent to help us in our times of trouble. Many of you have some experiences um, uh, uh, of uh, angelic uh, intervention. You may not have seen uh, like a uh, uh, heavenly being coming down, with flying to your, 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 uh, your side. But my brother had those kind of visions where he saw angels were helping uh, uh, to guard the tra traffic, protect the traffic in India. I've shared that one with you while he was driving by. He was a young believer. So God was opening his eyes to show him those angels that are protecting his children. And I, we had a situation back uh, uh, when we first came to uh, the USA in um, uh, we were living that time in Quincy. It was our very first uh, vacation. My daughters will remember very well. Uh, we were all excited going to Berkshires uh, in the north. We were on the highway. We were driving uh, in the evening time. And uh, we began to hear some noise coming on the, from the right side of, our, right hand of, the, right side of the car. Uh, and uh, we slowed down and I pulled to the side. You know what, as I pulled down and I've noticed, the front tire from the, on the passenger side burst. In the middle of, you know, on that whole night, we were like uh, us wondering, what do we do? You know, if I know how to prepare a sermon, but I never know how to change a flat tire. Let me tell you, I've never learned. So we were wondering, what do we do? And we saw a car pulled by. Us. And then he, and he went forward and he stopped. And then we saw a man coming towards us. And we wondered, who is this man? And, and finally he came to us and said, oh, are you in trouble? I said, yes, we are. Well, do you have a spare tire? Yes, we do. Uh, and then, you know, he got to change the tire fully and, and helped us. And then uh, we, we wanted to thank him. And then he said, well, uh, I want to offer some maybe some money, but he said, well, no, I just want to thank, I want to do this to you, and then, then he walked off. And then as we got into the car, oh, one, my, one of my daughters said, oh, maybe he's an angel. I said, yes, the angels can come in human form. God could help us when we are in trouble. So maybe you have uh, such situations, but I wanted, during this uh, COVID uh, pandemic, we won't panic. Why? Because God's angels will protect his children. 
take note of these words in Psalm 91, 92. It says, if you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you, no plague will come near your home, for he will command or order his angels to protect you wherever you go. Oh, dear friends, what assuring words. So my only hope in this world, our only hope in this world is in Jesus the Son, who is the radiance of God's glory. He is the one who holds everything by his powerful word. And today I'm here to proclaim Jesus is greater than the angels. Now, do we have to worship angels? No, we don't worship angels because Jesus is greater than the angels. So we will worship Jesus alone. If you want to find out that, you read through the book of Revelation how people are, uh, people and the angelic beings, and the whole creation worships Jesus forever and ever. So dear friends, this morning I just want us to have that elevate, elevated picture of Jesus where Jesus sees at his right hand. Take hold of his hand and he will guide us through any storm, any difficulty that you may be going through right now. Let's close our eyes and um, just let the, have, let's have the mental picture of Jesus right here standing next to us. And we are next to him. We want to put all our hopes, all our, our dreams, all our fears, cast all our anxieties upon him because he cares for us. As we sing our uh, closing song, uh, I want us to put our hearts together and believe in the Lord and let him be the center of our hope. Our, let's, let's sing this song together. Hope is well for us.
Okay. Yes, Lord God, we thank you. Would you just bow our heads together and let's pray to the Lord. Dear God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for these assuring words, so Lord God. Lord, you are our rock. We build our lives upon you, Lord. All of the ground is uh, sinking uh, sand, Lord God. And uh, uh, so, Lord, uh, would you hold uh, all of us together again by your powerful words. Uh, as we go into the day, Lord God, may your presence continue to go with us. And Lord God, send your angels to help us when we are in need, Lord. We praise you and we bless you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and uh, amen. The love of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will be with us forever and ever. Amen. God bless you all and join our uh, live uh, Zoom social at 11.30 or so. And uh, we'll see you next Sunday again. Uh, come back to, we have a few more of these live streams. Even after we uh, come back in person, we will continue to do these live streams. So enjoy the rest of the day. God bless you.